On October 10th, I received a Twitter DM containing this Breitbart article. THE GOOD CENSOR! Sorry I'm yelling, but it's in all caps, so you have to yell. That's official internet law. Leaked briefing says Google must move away from American tradition of free speech to expand globally, attract advertisers, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. Quite the incendiary title. I quickly scanned the article. A leaked Google briefing titled The Good Censor advises tech companies to move away from the American tradition of free speech if they wish to attract advertising revenue and continue global expansion. Page 14 of the document acknowledges that a few Silicon Valley tech giants now control the majority of our conversations, but that these platforms, including Google, must now break their initial promise to users of free speech and content neutrality. That all sounds pretty damning. And I even joked about how it's Logan Paul's fault that Google is censoring everyone. But here's where it really picked up. The briefing explains that tech companies, including Google, Facebook, and Twitter, initially leaned towards an American tradition of free speech that prioritizes free speech for democracy, not civility. But it goes on to say that the same companies now embrace the European tradition that favors dignity over liberty and civility over freedom. Google, argues the briefing, must move towards the European tradition and create well-ordered spaces for safety and civility rather than the unmediated marketplace of ideas. Mother of God. Wow, this looks serious. An internal, secret Google memo that was leaked, where they talk about moving away from the great American values of free speech to the smelly European views of censorship. This is big, big, big. And look at these charts and graphs. It's so professional. It was with this quick scanning, and being psychologically primed by the Breitbart article headline, that I interpreted these graphs as damning evidence against Google and retweeted the article. And I thought, I gotta make a video on this big news. So after a few hours of doing nothing, <coughs> I got around to actually reading the report. The first thing that raised the red flag was this, Insights Lab. A quick Google search showed the company to be a data analysis firm, and considering the watermark on every page, it's safe to assume that they, not Google, wrote this report. Also, their site seemed to be conspicuously absent of the telltale markers of SJW ideology that we saw on something like Kate's website. And yet the Breitbart article not only makes no mention of this, but the implication to me from first reading seemed to be that Google themselves wrote these reports. Weird. And that's when I noticed this. Responding to the leak, an official Google source said the document should be considered internal research and not an official company position. Wah, wah. Wah. Ah, I thought. This is going to be one of those stories. Google hired some outside firm to do a study and the results came back very SJW pro censorship. But there's no direct proof provided that Google actually has implemented anything in the report. But I was wrong again. Wrong. Because then I actually read the report, and I realized the truth. <laughs> These Breitbart articles were all lies. You liar! You see, the study isn't pro-censorship at all. The whole thing is actually a rather neutral accounting of what's currently going on with tech companies. The only time the report advocates for anything is in the last four pages of an 85-page report. So let's see what the horribly pro-censorous things they advocate for. People vary in their opinion of how much censorship there should be online, often switching their position from issue to issue depending on the latest controversy. Wow. Sounds like whoever wrote this report is some kind of horrible centrist and knows that people aren't consistent at all about their values and what speech should be censored. Google might continue to shift with the times, changing its stance on how much or how little it censors due to public or governmental or commercial pressures. If it does, acknowledgement of what this shift in position means for users and for Google is essential. Shifting blindly or silently in one direction or another rightly incites users' fury. Whatever pathway is taken, Google has an opportunity to make the most of it. Here are nine principles to kickstart the journey. Be more consistent. Don't take sides. People are asking for equal treatment regardless of politics or popularity. 
equal treatment regardless of politics. How outrageous! It's an outrage. Police tone instead of content. People are asking you to oversee safe spaces that still encourage debate. Uh oh. They said safe spaces, here comes some SJW ideology. My recommendation is to focus on regulating tone. If someone is threatening someone, regardless of the topic, that's something that a lot of people can agree has no place online. I think that's the least politically precarious situation. Hey look, if you threaten someone's life, it gets pulled. If you just argue with each other, that's fine. Wow, that sounds like a total SJW. You don't want your life to be threatened on the internet? <sighs> What a fragile snowflake. Be more transparent. Oh my lord. Transparency is clearly the tool of authoritarian censorship. Justify global positions. People are asking you to continue justifying your position regarding censorship in other markets. <gasps> Google should have to explain their position in regards to censorship in international markets. Oh no, we can't have that. Explaining a controversial position is left-wing regressive ideology. Enforce standards and policies clearly. People are asking for clearer explanations of censorship policies and mechanisms, particularly when things go wrong. Much of social media's editorial guidelines are a black box, inaccessible to the public since they belong to private companies. The lack of transparency means it's unclear what factors go into the decision to take down a post. Wow, it's not like every single YouTuber and Twitter user on the planet has asked for this exact thing. Explain the technology. People are asking you to tell them more about how your technology actually works. For Google in particular, public confusion about how it works is a huge problem, because the math behind autocomplete and how the news feed and search are managed are not only relatively obscure, but are changed all the time. So the short answer that Google gives about how the technology works is really not sufficient to the degree of anxiety people have about Google's centrality to how people receive their information. Oh geez, it's like the conclusions this report reaches is something every YouTuber has desperately asked for. Be more responsive. Improve communication. People are asking for more responsive customer service when it comes to censored content and complaints about bad behavior online. They need to be more transparent about their enforcement mechanism and they need to have clear grievance and appeal mechanisms so people can get their content reinstated. Hey, that sounds like a great, I mean, that's a terrible idea. What kind of left-wing regressive would advocate for this? Take problems seriously. People are asking for you to acknowledge the scope of problems in good time and own up to your responsibilities as both a cause and a solution. <laughs> responsibilities? <laughs> when an authoritarian SJW left-wing regressive hug box. <laughs> Be more empowering. Positive guidelines. People are asking for guidance on how to behave on your platform rather than solely how not to. Better signpost. People are asking for empowering tools that help them identify contentious issues and content rather than platforms that control conversations. <laughs> clarity? Why would anyone want clarity on what the fuck these tech companies actually deem acceptable? No, we'd all rather play this guessing game where we blindly grope around in the dark and just hope it's not something inappropriate we accidentally grab onto. So as you can clearly see, this report is not only totally harmless, it's actually good and promotes changes that most people want to see. So what the hell is wrong with Breitbart? How could they possibly get this so wrong? So did Breitbart intentionally lie about this study, or is this merely Hanlon's razor? It is simply ignorance, or just bias. Breitbart being so up their own ideological bubble that it's impossible for them to see things neutrally. Let's try to find out. Now to untangle the extent of the lies, or mistakes, the Breitbart articles promote about the study is doubly obnoxious, because for some reason, instead of writing one article, they wrote a bunch of articles all about the same topic, all released at the same time. Why would they do this? I can only think of two reasons. One is that they want to flood the algorithm, so that if you search for anything related to the subject, one of the Breitbart articles will come up. And second, money! If you've ever clicked on one of those horrible clickbait lists, you'll see that they make you go to a new page for each item. This is so they get a new click for every new page, which translates into more money. So Breitbart, the news outlet, is apparently now doing the same thing. Not only does this spread all the information out, but also makes some of the articles contradict each other, even though they've supposedly all been written by the same guy. 
Breitbart's primary point about this memo is repeated several times in different articles, and they claim that the report is advocating for Google to be pro-censorship. As I showed you in the beginning of the video, remember the contradictions I mentioned? Because in a different article, they say, the first approach is described as a product of the American tradition, which prioritizes free speech for democracy, not civility. The second is described as a product of the European tradition, which favors dignity over liberty and civility over freedom. The briefing claims that all tech platforms are now moving toward the European tradition. Whoa, 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 whoa. Notice how claims are moving towards, which is a neutral statement of fact, morphs into the briefing argues Google must move towards, which is a statement claiming the report has chosen a side. This leads me to believe that the articles are deliberately misleading, because how could they possibly get it right in one article and wrong in another when they're written by the same person? And in one article, they admit that the recommendations only appear at the last four pages. Yet that doesn't stop them from continually claiming that the neutral observations of the study are actually endorsements. Leaked briefing says Google must move away from American tradition of free speech. A leaked Google briefing titled The Good Censor advises tech companies to move away from the American tradition of free speech. Doing so, says the briefing, will enable Google to respond to regulatory demands and maintain global expansion. For example, the briefing argues that tech companies will have to censor their platforms if they want to expand globally. They make the business case for censorship. They say uh, you need to censor in order to protect advertisers from controversy and you need a sensor in order to maintain global expansion. Just as I said before, Breitbart conflates statements of facts and observations as if that's the position the report wants Google to reach. It reminds me of all the times people complain about Jordan Peterson bringing up gender differences that have been discovered and say he's advocating for them. But you're just saying that's the way it is. Well, it's. I'm not saying anything. It's just an observation that that's the way it is. Or when Ezra Klein whinged for two hours to Sam Harris because Harris dared to have Charles Murray on the podcast and they discussed data about average racial IQ differences. Even in the charts that we've already seen, it should be very obvious that these are presented as neutral statements. Tech firms are performing a balancing act between two incompatible positions, but tech firms have gradually shifted away from the unmediated free speech and toward censorship and moderation. That's just what is currently happening. It doesn't say anywhere that that's what they're advocating for. But sitch. Even if they don't directly state it, they're really advocating for censorship. You just have to read between the lines. Now you could think that if you've only read the Breitbart articles or skimmed the report after you read the Breitbart articles, which are designed to psychologically prime you to see through their lens. Because Breitbart is only able to claim that these charts advocate for censorship by removing them from the context in which they exist in the report. So what is the magical removed context for these charts? And how do we know that Breitbart's interpretation is completely wrong? Well, let's back up a little bit in the report to see what leads to these charts being presented. First, we'll start with how the report says tech companies are mismanaging the current situation and behaving badly. How are tech firms mismanaging the issues? Inconsistent interventions, lack of transparency, underplaying the issues, slow corrections, global inconsistency, reactionary tactics. This leads into, with so much bad behavior, it's not surprising that users and governments have been finding ways to fight back. That's a, that's a typo. Then it goes to what people are doing to deal with the tech company's mismanagement. Users are self-censoring, moving to other platforms, protesting, going back to print media. We're gonna come back to this slide a little later. Then the report goes on to governments and talks about how they're suing tech companies, restricting and pushing companies to preemptively regulate content content, and passing stricter laws. And that leads directly to, how are the tech firms responding? Where they describe how tech companies are tightening their terms of service, moving to a more active role of censorship, and increasing moderation. Okay, so so far the structure and context of the report seems pretty straightforward. The tech companies are mismanaging the situation, which leads to users and governments responding in various ways, which leads to the tech companies responding to the user and government's response. The immediate next part is this. 
So it's problem solved, right? No, not quite. Okay, so putting the rhyme aside, without knowing what comes next, it's safe to assume that what the report is about to describe is going to be a problem, right? Well, what comes directly after this? Oh look, it's the charts that the Breitbart articles incorrectly pointed to as advocating for censorship. Yet when looking at the preceding context, it turns out it's the exact opposite. Let's just analyze this for a second using normal human flesh creature logic. Someone describes a problem to you. You then explain how the problem is being handled and ask, problem solved, right? And the person responds, Not quite my temple. It's safe to assume that what they're about to tell you next is part of the problem and should not be interpreted as a good thing. And directly after these charts comes this quote. For a long time, we thought of censorship in terms of government and nation states. And I think now we're in an era which people are starting to realize that private companies, probably more than ever before, control people's ability to amplify their voices. And whether or not their speech stays up or comes down, also what they see and what they can listen to, what they can read. Hmm, doesn't really seem like something someone would put if they're trying to advocate for censorship. Does it? The next page is the chart that they use as their smoking gun. Though of course the evil intentions of this chart is entirely dependent on removing the context that we talked about. Notice it says, why the shift towards censorship? It's a question. It doesn't say why they should shift towards censorship. These statements are not persuasive points. Their statements on why the tech companies are doing what they're currently doing in regards to censorship. Come on, Sitch. We all know the I'm just asking questions technique. But hey, I'm just a normal kid, like you, except that I ask questions. Oh, okay. So why don't we just look at the next page to see what the context is. Oh, it's a timeline that says, this new position as moderators in chief has been coming for some time, but users and their governments are questioning the sensorial powers and responsibilities of tech firms like never before. Tech companies are under fire for creating problems instead of solving them. Amazon, Google, and Facebook are making decisions about who gets a digital megaphone and who should be unplugged from the web. Their amount of concentrated authority resembles the divine right of kings and is sparking a backlash that is still gathering force. Wow! Doesn't sound like the blanket advocation of censorship that the Breitbart articles make it out to be. And the next page is an even further damaging quote. It's unclear whether Facebook knows the extent of the collateral damage that's coming from its censorship strategies, or the other companies as well. But we do know that journalism, activism, and public debate are being silenced in the effort to stamp out extremist speech. With these companies having so much power over the public discourse, they need to be held accountable. And if that's not enough, to show you that this report is not advocating for censorship the way Breitbart claims, just look at the next few pages. Being critical of big tech's censorship powers was once a niche stance, coming mostly from those on the right. But now, concern about big technology's abandonment of neutrality has gone mainstream. We've heard increasingly loud calls for media-esque regulations. If this report is supposed to be persuading Google that it has to They make the business case for censorship. It's doing the worst job imaginable. This section ends with this. The platform's legal and moral demands create an unresolved tension. The platforms have to deny that they're media companies in order to retain their immunity from liability. But at the same time, they're exercising more influence as media companies than CBS News did in its heyday. And therefore, in order for democratic values to flourish, they need to embrace free speech standards. And that's it. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. The last pages after this are the recommendations we already went over. So it should be perfectly clear that the Breitbart articles are either incorrect through ignorance or purposely structured dishonestly to push an ideological narrative. There's a few more specific corrections that I think need to be pointed out in terms of these articles. Now this one's pretty hilarious. 
The document also recommends clear explanation of how censorship works on Google, and quotes George Soros's advice about justifying censorship in non-US markets. Ah, but of course, because what would be a right-wing boogeyman propaganda hit piece be without a connection to George Soros? Now when you read the phrase, George Soros' advice about justifying censorship in non-US markets, it sounds like they're saying that George Soros is advocating for censorship in non-US markets. But why don't we actually read what it says? Justify global position. People are asking you to continue justifying your position regarding censorship in other markets. George Soros says, US-based IT monopolies are already tempted to compromise themselves in order to gain entrance in these vast and fast-growing markets. The dictatorial leaders in these countries may be only too happy to collaborate with them since they want to improve their methods of control over their own population and expand their power and influence in the United States and the rest of the world. Oh, wow. We must be in opposite land, because that sounds the exact opposite of justifying censorship to me. That sounds like a warning. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not reading it with my special Soros detection glasses on. Next, they keep using the word admit. This gives the reader the false sense that Google wrote the report themselves, because you can only admit to something if you're the one being accused. Since Insights Labs is the one that wrote the report, they can't admit to anything. But framing it like Google admits is a far juicier story and will drive more clicks, regardless of it being true or not. Now here's another big mistake that they make in these articles. One of the reasons the document cites for alleged public disillusionment with free speech on the web is the fact that it allows conspiracy theories to spread. The example Google uses to highlight conspiracy theories on social media is a 2016 tweet from then-candidate Donald Trump alleging that Google searches suppress negative results about Hillary Clinton. And here in another article they say the same thing. One of the reasons Google identifies for allegedly widespread disillusionment with internet free speech is that it breeds conspiracies. And you can see the chart below. Breeds conspiracy theories. Google's search engine was suppressing the bad news about Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump 2016. So the context Breitbart provides is the election of Trump equals free speech is no longer viable. And their claim backing that up were these parts about the reason for public disillusionment of free speech. But again, this is all wrong. And all one has to do is look at the context to understand it. You see, this chart comes directly after this page that we already looked at. That's all about how the tech firms are mismanaging the issue. And now suddenly the context becomes clear. The report is saying because the tech firms are mismanaging the issues, when it comes to users, all this bad behavior and mismanagement on the tech company's part leads to these four things. Impacting trust. It's a nightmare. I can't trust YouTube anymore. Insights criticism. How a half-educated tech elite delivered us into chaos. Increases calls for regulations. And breeds conspiracy theories. Leaving users feeling powerless, frustrated, and confused. So you can clearly see that the context is not the public disillusionment with free speech, as Breitbart claims. It's the public disillusionment with the tech companies and how they're handling the current situation. Now you can criticize this report for using the term conspiracy theory, as it's typically associated as a negative term. But it is completely true that the lack of transparency from the tech companies incentivizes and breeds conspiracy theories, or people like us YouTubers guessing negative motivations behind tech companies' behaviors, which is something I've personally done. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a fact. And none of it is about the public disillusionment with free speech, as Breitbart claims. There are more things that the Breitbart articles get wrong, but it's really all more of the same. The full report is linked in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. And even though the 85 pages seems daunting, as you've seen, they're not really page pages. More like PowerPoint slides. Now one interesting thing that I want to go back to that was conspicuously absent from any of the Breitbart articles that I saw is this. 
Because of the tech company's mismanagement of the situation, users are returning to trusted sources. With digital platforms implicated in the spread of fake news and misinformation from questionable sources, people are turning to mainstream media outlets for trustworthy information. The New Yorker, New York Times, Washington Post, The Wall Street Journal, and The Guardian all saw bumps in subscriptions in 2017, with the biggest growth coming from young people. Example, after hearing about fake news, 23% of people were more trusted of printed news magazines. 58% of people were less trusting of social media's political coverage. So this information would directly support the theory that I and many others have put forward that these constant attacks on YouTube and Google by the press is motivated by money and trying to retain their market share as a trusted source. Now you may have noticed that some of these pages have little citation numbers for the stats they reference. But of course, Breitbart doesn't provide the information on where any of these citations actually lead. I don't know, maybe they didn't get them in the leak. But I do remember that being a fairly large criticism against the people that published the leaked James Damore memo because they also didn't provide any of the citations in the report. So make what you will of that. Now, of course, the memo itself is not perfect and does contain things that I think merit valid criticism, such as the previously mentioned conspiracy theory line and right here where they incorrectly call Milo an alt-right ringleader, as well as oversimplifying some subjects like what happened to Backpage.com or the events surrounding the first YouTube ad crisis although none of that supports Breitbart's narrative. And even when they reported on one of these criticisms, they still managed to screw it up. The funny thing is, Breitbart could have still used this report to attack Google, satisfying their ideological and tribal right-wing narrative, without being dishonest. It's really simple. Here's the headline. Outside contractor hired by Google tells Google they're handling censorship wrong and are acting irresponsibly. Google ignores them you know, or something to that effect. But they didn't do that. They reached too high and too far. And now all that's left is the fall. And I'm sure some people are wondering, Sitch, why are you bothering going after this? There's much worthier subjects about SJWs acting crazy that are worth making videos about. Well, here's the thing. When someone's doing something you don't agree with, and then when they try to change that behavior with a way that you think is good, you shouldn't criticize them for it. And that's why I view Breitbart's coverage of this report as completely insane. The report promotes ideas that almost every single YouTuber would say are good ideas and would be healthy for the platform. And yet Breitbart is attacking the report and pretending it says the opposite. If you criticize someone when they're at least possibly attempting to do something that you agree with, all that's gonna happen is that they're just gonna throw their hands up and say, well, I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. So I may as well not even try to do the right thing and just do whatever I want. And that's why it's so dangerous for Breitbart or anyone to turn this report around in such a dishonest fashion. If you want to criticize Google and other tech companies for censorship, go ahead. I've done that very thing on this channel multiple times. But you know what you shouldn't do? Lie about it. This is one of the SJW's biggest problems. They will cry wolf at the drop of a hat. And obviously the more you cry wolf, the more people ignore your actually valid claims. Guys of the name D-Money, Smoothie, Shifty, uh, these type of guys that come from Connecticut, New York, they come up here, they sell their heroin, then they go back home. Incidentally, half the time they impregnate a young white girl before they leave. Are you gonna throw it? Or are you taking your coffee black these days? <laughs> and holding this report up as some sort of evil pro-censorship document only taints all your future arguments as not valid. So it would be in everyone's interest to not fall into this mental trap. And also because, you know, I'm just sick of people trying to pretend that Breitbart isn't a complete ideological rag motivated entirely by political tribalism and pretend like it's some kind of trustworthy source of information. You know, just, you know, just that little thing too.